Thank you very much for the invitation to talk about one of my favorite topics, plagiarism. And in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to try and walk around the definition of plagiarism and show you some of the um, results that I have on plagiarism detection. Um, so yes, you've pretty much covered everything. Uh, thank you very much, Rock. Um, so I'll just swip over this, except for one thing. I've been testing plagiarism detection software since 2004, and um, I have one conclusion from this. Software cannot detect plagiarism. So if that's the only thing you hear or take away from this talk, software can't detect plagiarism. It's only a tool. So let's get a little bit deeper into why I am of this opinion. When we want to get a definition of what actually plagiarism is, this ends up being quite a difficult question. Uh, in Germany, for example, we do not have a legal definition of plagiarism. And in many other countries, this is also the case. Plagiarism is an educational problem and it's a research integrity problem. So it's uh, sort of in the sphere of the norms that we decide as academics, what are our values? And one of the things that we do is we're not to copy ideas or texts from other people without acknowledging that. You can find some authors on plagiarism talking about text being stolen, but <laughs> the text is not taken away. So that doesn't really fit whether. And others talk about fraud, but in Germany, fraud has to deal with um, money changing hands. And that's not always the case in plagiarism. We have others who, um, think that plagiarism has something to do with copyright. And it is the case that some copyright issues are plagiarism and some plagiarism is a copyright issue, but they are not the same. In Germany, there's quite a misconception that plagiarism and especially the plagiarism documentation that we do at Vroniplagwiki, where we have documented um, 210 dissertations and habilitations since we started working in 2011. It's not about giving proper references for facts. Um, yes, that is an issue in uh, good scientific practice, but it's not the topic of plagiarism. So I've seen a lot of attempts to define it in English, but a lot of them seem to be sort of this, you know, we know it when we see it, and that's not very precise. So I like to propagate a definition that I have adapted from Teddy Fishman. She was the director of the International Center for Academic Integrity, ACAI, for many years, and she's put this uh, idea forward in 2009, and I've, I've adapted it a bit. I've left off the last bit and added the word properly. And she says plagiarism occurs when someone uses words, ideas, or work products that are attributable to another identifiable person or source without properly attributing the work to the source from which it was obtained in a situation in which there is a legitimate expectation of original authorship. She had included something about uh, you had to have a profit from the plagiarism. And I'm of the opinion the plagiarism is a plagiarism, even if you don't profit from it. There's something missing here, isn't it? Or at least in the discussion in Germany, there's something missing here. What about intent? Many of the plagiarists that are caught start saying, well, I didn't intend to do that. It, it was a mistake, it, was, it, it, it just happened. And this is an issue that uh, we have to be aware of. It is possible, but very, very seldom that someone is going to be plagiarizing by mistake over chapters and chapters and pa paragraphs and paragraphs. So um, we can't actually know about intent. That's something that is only in the minds of people and we can't look into their minds. So we have to focus more on just the text itself and the text is a plagiarism. The question of whether they can talk about, I didn't intend to do this or not, this is an issue for the sanctions that might be levied. But the text itself remains a plagiarism, even if it's not sanctioned. So I'd like to go through some types of academic misconduct. I wanna talk um, about different kinds of plagiarism to help make it clear why it's so difficult for software to uh, find plagiarism. And then I just briefly have a few other things of image uh, manipulation, data fabrication, and so on. 
I'm going to start with uh, copy and paste. This is the kind of plagiarism that is usually very easy to determine. I'm using a piece of software here that marks identical text. That means everything that is on the source here on the right hand side and is word identical to something on the uh, left is marked in the same color and the color just changes as soon as there is a word inserted, a word removed, or somehow the text changes, there's been a word changing. Um, I have included here an example from the University of Siena, as I see that Siena is a partner in your consortium. We have actually documented and informed the University of Siena of two plagiarisms. This is a PhD from 2012 that I informed the university of in 2016. I have not even gotten an acknowledgement from the university. And when I asked what's happening, I also didn't get an answer to my email there. So this is a very serious issue that we have with also many universities in Germany of the universities not having processes in place to deal with issues like this. This uh, complete plagiarism, by the way, is from the discussion section of this PhD. We find people who, um, strangely enough, copy from Wikipedia. In our 210 dissertations and habilitations, we've got over 60 doctoral dissertations and habilitations that take text more or less unchanged from the Wikipedia. Um, we had one that had 11 pages taken verbatim from the Wikipedia. And this was one from the uh, University of Munich where the person copied from the Wikipedia, put it into Word, and Word was kind enough to underline the words and put the links in the final version so that when you look at the final version, the PDF, it's absolutely clear that this text was taken from the Wikipedia. And of course, it's not acknowledged that it is from the Wikipedia. That kind of plagiarism is easy to determine. As soon as people start disguising or putting things together. We have terms disguised plagiarism or mosaic plagiarism. This is where it starts to get difficult from software. Software is pretty good at finding copy and paste plagiarism. But as soon as the word order is changed, for example, Iceland and Greenland becomes Greenland and Iceland. Software says those are different strings because they don't see the meaning of these words. And as soon as we uh, look at um, examples, this is from another Vroni Plagwiki example, where the words are just switched with synonyms. They're slightly reworded. This does not change what they're taking or what they're using here, but this makes it extremely difficult for software to see that this is the same thing because there are so many different synonyms that could be used. We also have uh, people adding words or removing words and all these kinds of perhaps superficial changes will uh, serve to make it very difficult for software to find the plagiarism. But of course, it doesn't change the fact that it is a plagiarism. So I have a little example here from a recent documentation that we did. It's a PhD from Vienna, 2001 in computer science. And um, here you can see a little bit of the rearrangements. Um, everything that is an identical color is identical on uh, both sides. On the right, we have the source. On the left, we have the doctoral dissertation. Um, this is uh, the doctoral dissertation of the blockchain queen, uh, a, a woman who's been doing a lot of work on blockchain and stuff like this. And it turns out her dissertation is very highly plagiarized. So you see from the company, it's become the retailer. The listings and the figures have changed the idea. What was just the manufacturer is now the fuzzy dice manufacturer. The data in listing one is the exact same as in figure 11. And listing two has just put, been put in a different order in the um, dissertation. The bizarre thing about this one is, of course, that we've discovered that the source, which is a master's thesis from Sweden, is actually a plagiarism itself. Uh, both of these texts are available publicly online. We have some very serious uh, disguised or mosaic plagiarisms. Uh, this is a case uh, in medicine from the Technical University of Munich, where um, the text was taken, but a very important part, and this has to do with tumors with uh, cancer, instead of it being less than a millimeter, now it's applying to melanoma that are greater than a millimeter. 
And I do believe, even though I only have a minor in medicine, I do believe that that does make a difference. I've also found mosaic plagiarism uh, in peer-reviewed publications. Um, or rather, this one is, a, I could probably call a copy and paste and uh, search and replace plagiarism. These are two different papers from the International Journal of Clinical and Experimental Medicine, um, which um, are in the same issue, actually, of this journal. And they're published by two different research groups at the same Chinese hospital. And the one is about breast uh, cancer and the other about gastric cancer. And all they've done is they've gone through and done a search and replace on the word breast and made gastric out of it. Um, I've had scientists look at the uh, imaging and saying it looks like breast tissue. Um, but um, this concerns me quite a lot that we have plagiarism at this level of uh, scientific publications. Of course, the journal says it does peer review. I can't ascertain if they really do so. There's a kind of plagiarism that I call shake and paste plagiarism that I had observed in students, where they will take one paragraph from a different source and just sort of paste them together in more or less random order. We did discover this one doctoral dissertation from the University of Osnabrück on who wants to be a millionaire, uh, where articles from the German and the Russian Wikipedia were taken and stuck together with uh, things taken, you know, sentences taken from daily newspapers, all without reference, of course. And this ended up being a nice example of this shake and paste also found in a doctoral dissertation. This doctoral dissertation has been rescinded by the uh, University of Osnabrück. Then we have something that software can't do anything about. And this is translation plagiarism. That is, somebody takes a source that is in some other language, in this case, English, and translates it into German. Now, the interesting thing to observe here is that in this um, thesis, and um, oh, this is a habilitation that is based on another habilitation, um, you see this wonderfully mathematical formula. When you do a copy and paste from PDF, what happens is all the formatting information of the subscripts and the superscripts disappear. And so you end up with a really strange formula like this. Software can't see the difference between these two because it only sees, well, there's a sequence here. But we as humans can, of course, observe that looks weird. What's TSS? We haven't, nobody has defined that yet. And um, then you can suddenly see, oh, there appears to be an issue with this. I have another example here where a doctoral dissertation on the uh, right hand side in German was translated by the doctoral advisor into English for his uh, habilitation. <laughs> the only thing that we see the same here is the name of the microscope and where it was uh, used. But if you look very closely, you can see that the images and the data appear to be the same. Although if you look very closely at the, um, uh, at, at the dissertation and the habilitation, the number of mice being used has suddenly changed. It's gotten to be more. And this is rather strange if the exact same results are coming out. There's a type of plagiarism that has been called pawn sacrifice by a researcher in Germany. And I had not believed that this kind of plagiarism was actually available or used, but it is very, very often, especially in law dissertations, but also in others. And this is the uh, author actually gives the source, but doesn't make it clear that they're taking the text identical word for word, and they're not making it clear where does it begin and where does it end. So this is an example um, from the University of M Münster. And um, yes, the source is given, but in the source, he's just talking about some fish. Uh, and it's the same fish, of course, it's the uh, puff fish. Um, but the data is also being taken. And that bit up at the top that is in white is just because the source had a lot of blanks inserted in these long names and our software is really stupid. It um, doesn't see that these are actually more or less the same without the, the blanks. We've seen pawn sacrifice far too often. Uh, just a brief uh, excursion into uh, non-textual uh, things. This is from a, a doctoral dissertation at the TU in Munich where um, a, a nice example of uh, histology image was just cut out 
and used as if the student had done this herself. Although the image that she used, if you look very closely down here, actually had a source given where this data was taken from. And this disappears, of course, as the image is being cut out here. And of course, we could talk for hours about manipulated blots from online journals. Elizabeth Bick does a lot of work uh, in this area, identifying these uh, kinds of image issues where things have been rotated or flipped or something like that. We also found an interesting case uh, in a medical dissertation at the Charité that rather exactly mirrored a dissertation that was done with the same doctoral advisor two years previously at the Charité. The interesting thing was you could say, oh, well, these are different theses, they have different data. Yes, but I don't believe any of the data in the second dissertation because if you look closely, um, the uh, author of the second dissertation copied the percentages without bothering to check whether the percentages actually matched the numbers that she had put together. And you can recalculate this yourself and see that these numbers do not actually match. So we see that plagiarism and data fabrication go hand in hand. We, I have often heard from uh, researchers, especially in biomedical research, well, we only do data fabrication, we don't do plagiarism. Well, yes, when someone is willing to cut corners, um, they don't have the value ethics instilled in them to always be true. So if you find data fabrication or you find plagiarism, it may not just be this portion that you've found, it may be the entire thesis. So we have to bring everything that they do into doubt because they've shown that they can cut corners. All right, a long definition of plagiarism, and I hope to show you that it's very wide. We'd like to detect plagiarism. And of course, everybody would love to have some sort of litmus test, right? You put the thesis in and it comes out either orange or blue so that you know whether it's a plagiarism or not. And unsurprisingly, there are many, many companies out there that are very willing to oblige you. And their departments of, of, of uh, sales have these wonderful sayings, advanced online plagiarism detection. Turnitin says that they're doing a check for originality, which they can't actually do because you can never prove that anything is original. You can only show plagiarism by demonstrating the source, but no uh, software system is going to have all publications in their database. They may have a lot, but they're never going to have everything. And so there can be no check for originality. There could only be a check for uh, potential plagiarism. Turnitin also says student work is instantly checked for potential plagiarism using pattern recognition algorithms. This is one of those things from computer science that um, researchers like to uh, dazzle their listeners. It doesn't make it different if it's just a pattern recognition algorithm. Ephorus, a system that has been purchased by Turnitin, said they were easy, quick, and accurate. They weren't. Um, Plague Scan says it's based on the latest research in computer linguistics. That might be, they still don't find a lot. A uh, Polish system called Strike Plagiarism says verification of originality. Again, this is not possible. Or Urkund, a Swedish system, says plagiarism prevention that simply works and doesn't. In our most recent tests that uh, Rock uh, kindly mentioned as he was introducing me, uh, the European Network of Academic Integrity, which is an organization that is trying to put together a European uh, consortium similar to the ACAI in the United States, North America. We're trying to gather researchers from many European countries, although we do have uh, one researcher from Mexico who's uh, active with the group, in trying to promote academic integrity without much funding um, Europe-wide. And we got a consortium together with uh, Tomasz Foltenek and Dieter de, Blo um, de la Bolova from the Czech Republic. Um, Ala and Laima are from Latvia. Uh, Salim and Uzgo are from Turkey. Julius is from Slovakia. Uh, Jean is from Mexico and I'm from Germany. And we put together this test that took forever because of course we didn't have funding for doing this. So we were all doing this in our free time. 
It's published at Springer and you can have these slides so that you can find the paper later. We wrote to over, oh, we, we did a market survey and found over 50 different pl so-called plagiarism detection software systems. We um, wrote to some 30 of them and requested a, a free access to the system. Not all were willing to oblige. And so we ended up with these 15 systems. Academia is from um, Albania. Copyscape is um, an Israel Gibraltar researcher that used to work for Google, who has this system. Dokalok is a German system. DPV is a Slovakian national system. Dupla Checker is something we found online. Intihal is uh, the Turkish system. Plagueware is a German one. Plagiarism Software and PlagiarismCheck.org are just ones we found online. PlagScan is a German system. Strike Plagiarism, as I said, Polish. Turnitin is from the United States, but they have a very large uh, presence in the UK, which is soon to be outside of the EU. Uh, so they're scrambling to get servers inside the EU. Um, Unicheck is apparently an American company. Uh, Urkund is Swedish and Viper, one that is very active in the UK. We couldn't really determine where exactly they are located because my first tests with Viper actually pinpointed them as being in Pakistan, but they're now cloaking uh, where they are. So um, we have these systems. Um, and we took these languages that the researchers were able to at least read, Czech, English, German, Italian, Latvian, Slovakian, Spanish, and Turkish. It was important that we had at least two people in the research project that were able to understand the results in these various languages, because we didn't want to base our work just on, um, on one person saying what they did. I'm going to skip over a lot of what we actually did um, because it's all described in the paper in excruciating detail. But we looked at two aspects. We looked at coverage. That is, we produced plagiarisms. We produced plagiarisms that were disguised plagiarisms. And we did this in two different manners. And then we did a translation of uh, the plagiarism that we had written. The plagiarisms that we wrote were all done with permission of the original authors of the texts so that we weren't actually plagiarizing ourselves when we were uh, creating this material. Um, we then knew, of course, exactly how much was plagiarized. And we looked both at a single source plagiarism and at a multi-source plagiarism. That is, we took five different kinds of sources and strung this together, always 100 words from one source, 100 words from another source, and so on, and repeated this five times so that we had a relatively long article that we were giving to the software for a chance to, um, to find the sources. Then at least two researchers scored the results that we got from the software systems on a scale of zero to five. Five would have been perfect. We managed to find all the sources and it was exactly covered up. And this is here in this quadrant where you can see none of the systems came anywhere close to finding all of the plagiarism. Of course, the worst was the, was the translation plagiarism. That just did not work. But even in things that we thought would have been trivial, like Wikipedia plagiarism, surprisingly, not all systems find Wikipedia plagiarism. And it turns out that this is because they will tend to have one copy of Wikipedia stored, but Wikipedia changes over time. So current plagiarisms of the Wikipedia will not be found of the, by the system because they have old versions of the Wikipedia stored. The other dimension that we looked at was usability. Now we put together some criteria on usability. This should actually go further up, but um, oh. <coughs> We did, excuse me, we did decide it was okay to stop up here at uh, 48. Well, uh, we had at least, we had three researchers scoring the usability of the systems on a scale of, of um, doing either yes or no. Did they have the property or not? And so you can rather read this in this direction. That's why the colors go from red to green. And um, here at the top, we've had an interesting thing happening um, Urkund has gone together with Plagscan, which were both sort of here at the top, and they're now calling themselves original. This is a recent development just in September. 
The same thing in December, Turnitin has now purchased Unicheck and is incorporating that somehow in their Turnitin database as they had uh, purchased uh, Ephorus in the past. So we're seeing some of the best software systems going together, which is at least promising in a bit. But as you can see in the green area, there's not much. What's the problem? Well, I call these software mostly snake oil. Um, if you get well, it, you say it must have been that snake oil that I took because it helped me, even though there's no research showing that it actually does help. Many of the systems have false positives. That is, they react to plagiarism that's not there. Far too many have false negatives. That is, they don't find the plagiarism. Many companies violate the students' copyrights, especially within the EU, which is the only uh, uh, copyright law that uh, we were applying here. The reports are horrible. They're really hard to interpret and to interpret correctly, which is why people focus on the number. It turns out the numbers reported are generally meaningless. Sometimes they even change. 10 minutes later, when you do a new a test of the same software, you get a different result because they're using random uh, selections of the text to look at. So I have to look myself? Sure. That's the hard part. You have to read the text. So when we're looking at student papers, we uh, say, well, the text is very nicely written, but it's stylistically far above the level of the writer. There's some strange formatting. There are typos. There are abrupt style changes, odd words, or even embedded links. And this is a recent thing that we found uh, in part of the Vrodiplag Wiki work. Uh, we found a publication here um, on public relations in India, published in the International Journal of Arts and Sciences. Um, and we discovered that this was taken, this paragraph is taken exactly from the dissertation of the author. And the dissertation took the text from the Wikipedia. And these links that were embedded in the Wikipedia still have made their way through to a published, potentially peer reviewed source, which is just because they use Word and Word is so helpful in embedding links. How to find the uh, plagiarism? All you need is three to five nouns, yeah? or a phrase in uh, quotation marks. The typo is your friend, or phrases from an often referenced sources. If they reference it a lot, they may have taken it word for word from there. I don't just look at the first page, and I set myself a time limit. People never believe me, so I have a few examples that I can show in German. Three words that are not simple words have led to just one result being found in Google. Or a really nice phrase that was a very nice turn of words actually only showed up two results, and that was because this author published the same text twice. We use a lot of additional tools at Vroniplag Wiki. Um, Google Scholar and Google Books are not usually included in the Google searches, so you it can be useful to look up the, the <laughs> The references in Google Scholar, and that may help you find the source for the information. One can use scanners and optical character recognition to extract the text from publications that are only in print. There's a German system called Pika Pika that examines text only with the Wikipedia, but they do look at various languages Wikipedia. There's a rather difficult to use but rather effective system called Wikiblame that tries to find the exact version of Wikipedia in which a, a special wording of a sentence was uh, found so that you can get a pretty good idea of about when this uh, plagiarism was taken from the Wikipedia. When we're looking for images, both TinEye and Google Image Search can be very helpful in finding the images that are floating around. There are various text comparison uh, tools that are available. I have one that a student of mine did as her bachelor's thesis that is quite useful as it runs in your browser. So you don't have to upload a text to some external server, but you use this in your browser. And I have a link to the, uh, the, the page where you can be using it then in your own browser to compare one text with another. And it colors it uh, similar to the Vroniplag Wiki uh, coloring that makes it so that you can click on a color and they balance on both sides so that you can see exactly in a synoptic form what the source and what the plagiarism looks like. So don't sleep plagiarism under the carpet, but don't trust 
plagiarism detection software because it's not doing what you expect it to do. I thank you very much for your patience. I hope Google Translate did a good job on thank you and questions. And if not, my apologies. Here are some links to my homepage, my blog, to the Vroni Plug Wiki site, which is unfortunately only in German, and our test stop report. I have another link in here. Thank you very much. And I look forward to our discussion.